If a gang of well-organized serial killers invaded your home and forced you to fight back for their amusement, what would you do? This isn't your typical random act of violence we're dealing with here. These guys have been watching us long enough to uncover our innermost secrets. Now, they've blocked all the exits and rigged up our entire house Big Brother style, so there's no running away and nowhere we can hide that they won't immediately find us. If we're gonna have any chance at making it out alive, we'll have to axe these psychos before they can hunt us down. And that means giving them exactly what they want. I'm gonna break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the death streamers in Keep Watching. The Millers have no idea what they're walking into. While they were out of town on a 10-day vacation, a group of ne'er-do-wells was carving up the county in a series of homemade horror films. And now, it seems they've been surreptitiously slated to star in the latest production. That's right. What you're seeing now is being captured via an inordinate number of hidden cameras planted before the Millers families return and it looks like these guys really went all out I mean we've got cameras inside keyholes cameras inside the microwave they even put a camera in the foosball table exactly how much money are they raking in off this trek that they can afford to burn an entire best buy full of wireless HD cameras with every run that Semper sponsorship will only get you so far well however they get away with it you'd better believe with this much setup there's no way they'll be rolling in like task force 141 and wasting everyone before anyone even knows they're there. No. True professionals like this take their time, which is why they kick things off slowly with some casual prowling. Now, that would be a lot harder for them to accomplish if anyone in this house actually bothered to shut the cut blinds. Am I the only one who gets chills staring at a pitch black window? Someone could be standing right outside watching your every move and you wouldn't have the slightest idea until their thumbs were wrapped around your throat. This is the kind of situation where it pays to have a dog or two. No home security system on the market can sniff out potential intruders like a man's best friend. Of course, determined attackers like these probably would have had the foresight to poison them ahead of time, but they could still serve as sort of a canary in the coal mine, provided you had sufficient brain power to connect the dots. Suffice to say, if your otherwise healthy schnauzer suddenly drops dead after munching down on some backyard bologna, you should probably start beefing up your home security and loading up on firepower. As for this particular raft of sitting ducks, things start heating up when DJ, who will henceforth be known as Carl for obvious reasons, finds a gift wrapped lighter out by the trash cans, and just in time for his burnout loser uncle to scare the shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> Matt. I'm sorry. Sorry, dude. Oh, that was too easy. Dude, just wait. Too easy is pretty much the theme of tonight. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, but Uncle Matt here is pretty much completely harmless. In fact, I'd say he's probably more of a danger to himself than anyone else. Although, he's certainly a threat to his older brother's marriage the way he shows up out of the blue and expects a place to crash until... question mark? Oh, well, he'll be out of their hair sooner than they realize. You know, they say smoking kills, but what they fail to mention is the inherent risk associated with stepping outside at odd hours of the night. Transitional spaces like right outside your home or vehicle are among the most likely venues for a surprise attack, especially when you're the only thing standing between the assailants and access to your belongings, not to mention everyone inside. Right now, their first and only line of defense against the unknown is this bozo. And just wait until you see how he handles the responsibility. Picture this. It's the middle of the night and you just heard this coming from the bushes. If anything about that would make you want to go investigate, please identify yourself in the comments so the rest of us know to stay the hell away from you. Naturally, Matt has to take things one step further. Not only does he leave the front door unlocked and unattended to go chasing a stray cat, once he discovers it was actually a recording, he just shrugs it off like it's all just no big deal. For Christ's sake, dude, you just got splinter celled. Next, it'll probably start spewing knockout gas, and that's if you're lucky. Instead, he he gets a visit from a mysterious quadcopter, and judging by that giant X on the ground, I'd say it's about time for his close-up. Huh, looks like this is Chaos Theory Sam we're dealing with here. For real, Matt had every opportunity to go back inside and forget he heard anything. It's not like they were playing a recording of someone begging for help, which is an actual thing criminals have done to lure people out of their homes, by the way. Besides, what was he gonna do? Broker peace between the cats? Good luck with that one, Bubbles. Even after finding the speaker, he still had a chance to make a run for it. Sure, I guess I could see how someone might take this for a prank, but given the choice between looking 
stupid on YouTube and looking stupid on Live Leak, I definitely got to go with the former. Either way, that X looks like something Wiley Coyote would use to try and drop an anvil on the Roadrunner. So there's no way I'd be sticking around to find out what that's about. With one Miller down, the filmmakers move on to phase two, which involves loudly barricading all points of egress on the ground floor. The commotion prompts Adam to go investigate, but upon hearing no response from little bro, he instructs Olivia to lock herself and the kids in their bedroom and call the cops. Only there's a problem. It seems at some point during the night, all their cell phones suddenly grew legs and embarked on a magic adventure. And by that I mean, the slashers went through and cleaned up while everyone was sleeping. Just goes to show how committed these guys are. Lesser talents probably would have just given them the Stiglitz treatment and called it a night. Well, it looks like we'll be sorting this mess out ourselves. Although, seeing as how Adam just pulled a steak knife from the hall closet, I'm guessing he doesn't have an MPX lying around anywhere. In that case, there's pretty much only one correct course of action here. We already have our family assembled at the top of the stairs, so there's no reason for us to go John wicking our way through the house. Instead, we should all barricade ourselves in the master bedroom while we figure out a way to call for help. As for Matt, if the intruders didn't split the moment they saw him, I highly doubt we can drive them off by waving old Sticky around. The only thing Adam's little patrol is likely to accomplish is putting himself in the morgue, especially since whoever's behind this shut off the power down here and cut the landline. But at least they were nice enough to leave him a flashlight so he could see it coming. And that's not all they left him. Looks like they got the thumbnail. What the? Are you seriously going to stand there and wait for that Polaroid to develop? Someone broke into your house, stole your phone off your dresser, and is currently in the process of caging you like an animal. No sh**. There's going to be a scary monster face in the picture. Oh, and now you're just going to carry on like you didn't just see that? Great. Yeah, looks like Matt was actually the smart one. And that's really bad news for the people depending on Adam to clutch this right now. The only rational response to this discovery is sprinting back upstairs as fast as humanly possible. If nothing else, but to ensure the mystery photographer isn't actively sawing through your family like Art the Clown. There's literally nothing down here worth risking everyone's lives over. And that includes include your deadbeat sibling, who, for all you know, invited this madness into your home. Dad! Please go back upstairs. Jamie, go back upstairs. Everything's gonna be okay. Dude, listen to your daughter for the love of God. Right now, the only thing working in your favor is this small light source given to you by the home invaders. You know, the one with an obvious camera attached to the side of it. This means they're almost certainly watching your every step and planning their next moves accordingly. As a matter of fact, we should smash that thing against the wall a few times to try and knock it loose, or at least render it inoperable. If there is any reason at all to linger around down here, it's to reach the alarm panel and spam the panic button about a hundred times. Times. Depending on what kind of security system they're running, it might still be able to contact the monitoring service using a cellular backup network. Other than that, there's really nothing more I can say that isn't just basic common sense. Of course, if Adam actually had any of that, he wouldn't be about to get sea turtled by thrift store Michael Myers. <laughs> Honestly, I'm surprised he made it this far. We're not pwned yet, as we still have that embarrassingly small knife from earlier. Time to jam that sucker in the side of his neck a few dozen times and see who stops breathing first. Not to mention the fact that our would-be assassin didn't even bother restraining our arms before using the bag. Meaning, we could still stick our fingers in her mouth to clear the airway. Or, at the very least, push the plastic inward far enough to bite into it. Then again, given everything we've seen leading up to this moment, the killer probably just assumed Adam would be too stupid to actually try anything remotely productive. And it seems that assessment was correct. Good thing our family did literally nothing to try and save us while we were grappling a single opponent armed with trash. I mean, come on. This is your husband and father we're talking about here. Grab a lamp or a fireplace poker and... Oh, wait, there's another one. Yeah, on second thought, running away is probably the better option. After all, we have no way of knowing how many we're actually dealing with here, which is yet another reason why going down there in the first place was so incredibly foolish. Now we're right where we would have been had we done this earlier, only without our physically strongest, I'll bet dumbest, family member. Fortunately, it seems Jamie got her brains from her mother's side 
outside. No point reinforcing the bedroom door when they could just waltz in right through the shared bathroom. That said, locks just keep honest people honest. We need to pull the mattress off the bed and wedge it between the bathroom door and the opposite wall. It also couldn't hurt to pile the bed frame, love seat, and whatever else we can move against the main door, as the two attackers working together won't have any trouble scooting that flimsy desk across the ground. At this point, our number one priority is calling for help. Of course, without our phones, we'll have to do that the old-fashioned way. And looking at that drone footage, the Miller's house isn't exactly out on Main Street. It's still worth a try. And as long as we aren't the kind of idiots that leave our keys on a hook by the front door, we can even try activating our car alarm to expand our sonic footprint. Also, since the power's working up here, I would try turning the TV on and cranking the volume up to 11. None of this is a slam dunk by any means. But when all it takes is a noise complaint to get the cops on the way, we might as well give it our best shot. In the meantime, those of us not actively screaming for help should start crafting an escape rope out of bed sheets. Having seen Matt's body and the surveillance drone hovering around, it's clear we won't be able to slide down without getting mobbed the second we touch the ground. But it could still come in handy as a last resort, should our new friends decide to set the place on fire. Until that happens, we need to sit tight and give our plan time to pay out, provided we can keep it together once they start rolling out the home movies. Is a prank between you and your friends? This isn't funny, Jamie! Yeah, I don't know how they got- Yes, cause high school pranks often involve murdering someone's family members. Haha, <laughs> nerd, now both your parents are dead. Yeah, remember how I said Jamie must have gotten her brains from her mom's side? Well, Olivia here is actually her stepmom. And judging by her next bright idea, I'm guessing she's gotten stuck in the dryer a few times. Evidently, in the short amount of time since watching her husband get brutally murdered and realizing they were being stalked for days, if not weeks leading up to this, she's decided that they should be able to calmly walk right out the front door, as long as they stayed together. I mean, at least she told them to scrounge up some weapons first, but this just doesn't sound like a good idea. I found something. What is that, a knitting needle? Well, it's certainly better than nothing, but not by much. Especially considering there's a treasure trove of deadly instruments lying all around them. You just have to believe. Just check out the bathroom. You have a curtain rod, a towel bar, and my personal favorite, the toilet tank lid. Plus, if there's any hairspray in there, we can use Carl's lighter to heat things up a little. Aside from that, we've got plenty of mirrors in either room we could shatter to make a bunch of single-use shivs. Olivia does this with some glass from the broken window, but she only makes one, and it's barely the size of your thumb. That said, even once we've assembled our improvised arsenal, I still think going for the front door is the wrong move. For all we know, the intruders have been pulling a reverse home alone since the moment we locked ourselves in. If we simply have to leave, I take the weapons and shimmy down our makeshift rope to the backyard. At least then we'll have slightly better visibility and more room to maneuver. It's not like we have to slowly crawl all the way down either. Once we get close, we can just drop to the ground at which time, we'd better be ready for the fight of our lives because you know for a fact they aren't gonna let us off that easily. Ultimately, Reason takes a backseat on this one, and the trio leaves the relative safety of the bedroom to begin their descent, only to regret this decision immediately. What is that? What's what? Wow, this is going great. So obviously they just put that there, meaning they're running both night vision and dead silence. Pretty much means they can shut the lights out whenever they want and tear us to pieces while we're completely helpless. Although the fact that they didn't do that just now suggests they'd rather have some fun with us first. Awesome. At the same time, this means we'll have more opportunities to take one of them with us. So it's not entirely the worst thing in the world. One thing's for sure, we'd better keep that Zippo handy in case they hit the lights again. I mean, we can't exactly fight by braille. It's also vital that we stick together, something Jamie thoughtlessly disregards the second she hears what sounds like her cell phone. Lucky for her, instead of walking into an ambush like her father, the sound leads them to a working stun gun. Kill or be killed, if they want us to fight back. Yes, but apparently not very hard, which is why they left us a glorified bug zapper and not any kind of actual weapon. Sure, models like this can make a handsy bar fly reconsider his advances, but against someone who's already determined to brutally murder you, it might as well be made of cardboard. It can't provide the neuromuscular incapacitation of an actual taser, and its small size means you have to get extremely close to be able to use it. All this is to say, we should drop it in a pocket and stick to weapons 
things that can actually kill. Besides, we know from looking at the screen that this thing has a camera on it, meaning it's just another curse in disguise they're providing to help keep tabs on us. Now slightly less unarmed, the surviving Millers make their way downstairs where they spot one of the bad guys misting the living room with gasoline. Hmm, I wonder what that's for. However, being the class A sucker that she is, Jamie lets herself get psyoped into splitting off from the others and directly into harm's way. Oh no, the people that killed your dad lied to you. Impossible. Since when are we taking these guys' word on anything? My god. The mere fact that the sign only lit up for you suggests they did it deliberately to pick you off from the herd, which of course they're going to do to make you an easier target. Still, is it just me, or did this murder attempt seem a lot less intense than what we saw with Matt and Adam? In fact, the entire chase that ensues comes off less like an attack and more like a containment. I mean, we were pretty much just herded over over to the basement door, which was conveniently left wide open, even though it locks from the outside for some dumb ass reason. Unfortunately, given their frenzied state and meager armaments, entombing themselves in this concrete cell was pretty much the only option. But at least they're free from their pursuers, for now. Naturally, like every other exit on this level, all the doors and windows have been sealed off. Lucky for us, this place is completely hoarded out with old crap, so there's bound to be something we can use to pry loose some of the barricades, like this huge knife jammed into the cabinet. Help me! Guys, guys, you hear that? Well, looks like neither of them are worthy. It's a shame too, as that would probably have done the trick. For real, has no one down here ever pulled out a nail before? It's called leverage. Of course, you can't just yank it straight back out. Jesus Christ, how could either of you have made it this far in life without encountering a problem like this before? I retract my previous statement about Jamie getting her mother's intelligence, unless she was also an idiot, which would certainly explain a lot right now. All right, this is hard to watch. So instead, we're going to jump to the exterior, where it seems Team Psycho is getting a surprise bonus kill in the form of Jamie's oblivious boyfriend, Josh. Poor guy doesn't even stand a chance. Only thing I can say here is don't show up at your girlfriend's family home in the middle of the night, although it's not like her dad was all that intimidating, especially now. Sure, the sound of everyone yelling is what drew him over to the basement in the first place, but I'm sure one of these lunatics would have found a way to give him the axe no matter what. I must say, the coup de grace on this one was truly inspiring. Fired. <laughs> However, traumatic as it might have been for our heroes to watch, there are a few things we can learn from Josh's untimely demise. First and foremost is their use of the red X. We saw the same thing with Adam and Matt, so that's for sure no coincidence. They've had multiple opportunities to put us down without a fight, but ultimately chose not to. So it's probably because we weren't in the right place. Knowing this, we should immediately check our surroundings for a similar marker. The absence of one doesn't necessarily mean we're safe, as they could certainly drag us over for the finishing blow if they really felt like it. But if we do see one, we'll want to reposition as quickly as possible. We've also just learned that there must be an open exit the killers are using to get in and out, as the guy who wasted Josh was definitely one of the two we've seen inside so far. If anything, they're probably expecting us to worm our way out through the basement, so finding another way out could potentially catch them off guard. Then again, we've seen camera feeds from all over the house at this point so there probably isn't anything we can do that they won't see coming. Case in point, Olivia sneaking out through the crawl space. I'm gonna go inside and find some help. It's gonna be fine, but I promise I'll come back. Yeah, I've been doing this long enough to know that that's what people say right before they die. You have absolutely no idea what's on the other side of that shaft. I mean, for Christ's sake, Josh's arrival was totally unplanned, and they clocked it in time to set him up for the most brutal kill we've seen so far. I'm not saying we shouldn't take advantage of this, because we absolutely should, but we should all go together to have the best chance at dealing with whatever lies ahead. First thing we should do is go grab the knife, pull it down, and send it out with the second person in line, just in case the first gets nailed before they even make it halfway out. Of course, they don't do anything like that, and that's why Olivia starts sweating bullets when she finds the gate padlocked with the key dangling right above yet another red X. Damn. Who could have seen that coming? Seriously though, this can't honestly be the only way out, can it? There isn't a rock or tree we could step on to make it over the retaining wall. I mean, clearly these folks don't actually give a d 
about security. Nope, I guess this is it, because she pretty much charges right in without hardly even thinking about it. And of course, she's so hyper-focused on the key, she doesn't even hear the footsteps coming up behind her. Man, it's a good thing he saved the self-res for this critical juncture. Too bad no one else is around to help the grievously injured man fend off an axe-wielding maniac. For real, you're just gonna keep fiddling with the key instead of going for the double team? The two of you together might actually be able to take this guy. Besides, for all you know, the key is just an elaborate troll designed to distract you long enough for this to happen. <laughs> Well, you made it. Better not let his sacrifice be in vain. Then again, this is hardly their first rodeo, so we're probably not out of the woods just yet. See how he stopped chasing you? That shows he's not worried about you going to bring back help, which means he doesn't think you're actually going to be able to do it. Probably has something to do with this windowless delivery van that has absolutely no legitimate reason for roaming around this late. But hey, don't let that stop you from running straight around to the back. Maybe they have candy. Well, I guess Matt died for nothing after all. For real, all you had to do was not run straight to the overtly sketch vehicle and you'd probably be home free right now. I could understand it if it were a marked ambulance or police car, or even a nice looking passenger vehicle. But this thing, really? Not to mention the fact that he told you to go around the back, and you totally did. The whole point of vehicles like this is that you can reach the back from the front, which is exactly what he did. So why would he want you to go all the way back there unless he was up to something. Holy sh**. Alright, let's see how Carl and Jamie are doing. Not too great by the looks of it. Apparently they're all in on the whole sit tight and wait for help thing Olivia sold them. And considering what just went down, they're gonna be sitting here for quite some time. Lucky for them, this dump has a bathroom. Well, sort of. It's pretty much just a separate room with a sink and a door. The latter of which shouldn't matter at all since who actually cares about privacy right now? Obviously, it's gonna lock behind you as soon as you go through it. And obviously, that's when the villain's gonna show up. Okay, Okay, Carl couldn't have known that would happen specifically. But the point is, we need to stay together at all times. We've seen firsthand, these guys are stealth incarnate. So who knows when or how they might turn up. Oh, and in case I haven't said it enough, grab the knife. It's not like you had anything else to work on this entire time. Once we find out Carl's locked in, we should have immediately thrown our shoulder into the door and knocked it loose. Instead, Jamie does literally nothing, which is why she's left to deal with the following situation all on her own. Well, she's doing better than everyone else so far, although it might have something to do with her not standing on an X. Not gonna help her now, because look what she just happened to crawl over. How could they have possibly known she was going to do that? Is this like a minority report kind of thing? If so, I wonder if they saw this coming. Must be the new and improved model. Right, so if ever there were a time for a double tap, it's when the killer's lying unconscious over the top of you. His little scythe looking thing is right next to your face for God's sake. Just grab it and use your imagination. Nah, we're just gonna slowly crawl away and assume everything's fine so that Carl can break out in the nick of time and finally put that knitting needle to good use. I'm not even gonna bother playing the clip. He just stabs him in the neck with it. With the crawl space now blocked off, two remaining millers finally grab the knife and head back upstairs, where they find Olivia's shrouded remains displayed prominently beside a projection of more home movies. Um, can you say obvious trap? Who do you think those videos are playing for, if not you? Wow, you literally walked right into that. What, did you suddenly forget the layout of your own home? Probably should have focused our attention on either finding a way out or hunting down the hunter instead of pausing to resolve our forced internal conflict. We're just lucky we were able to break contact and make a run for it before he could manifest another red X. Also, why is Carl empty handed right now? Are you telling me he didn't even think to loot the dead one's weapon? This whole nightmare could be over right now. All you had to do was rush him as a team and there wouldn't have been anything he could have done to stop at least one of you from slicing him wide open. Dude doesn't even have a weapon. Well, aside from the bag, anyway. But that's hardly useful against two people armed with blades. Whatever, it'll be fine, because it looks like Jamie has a plan. I mean, if it were me, I'd either go back downstairs or swing by the kitchen to make sure both of us had something sharp before launching the final confrontation. After all, they're literally watching our every move, meaning any kind of ambush we could stage would be spotted and reported 
before we could actually strike. Because of this, our only real option is a direct attack using overwhelming force. Bonus points if we could find any kind of chemical irritants beforehand we could use to blind him. Jamie's plan, however, is a little more complicated. They start by heading back down to the basement. Not to grab another weapon or anything, that'd be crazy. They actually go down there to get the other killer's mask. That way Jamie can obstruct her own vision while knife fighting. Something she's super familiar with, I'm sure. The whole idea is for her to distract the final boss while Carl grabs the gas canister thing and soaks him down for a little barbecue action. Doesn't actually sound like the worst idea, except they both make critical mistakes that nearly cost them the entire ball game. First of all, Jamie uses a reverse grip on the knife, which is great for slowly and brutally dispatching allied soldiers when you're lying directly on top of them, but in this situation, she needs to maximize her reach as much as possible. Besides, the intention here is for her to simply distract him, so she really just needs to swipe at him from a distance while targeting his extremities. The result is almost an instant replay of what happened just a minute ago. I mean, if it works, it works, I guess. Unfortunately, this is where Carl totally chokes. He doesn't have any trouble using the sprayer, but when it comes time to flame on, he can't quite get it in time. That said, it's not entirely his fault. We never should have let this entire plan hinge on his ability to light a Zippo first try. Instead, we should have had something burning already, like an oily rag or a Cuban cigar. Yes, OSHA would shit a pineapple if they saw him holding an open flame anywhere near the gas sprayer, but we'd want him to stay a little farther back before the attack, in case the bagman tries to hose us down first. So, now here we are, with Jamie right about to follow her father's footsteps straight to the grave. But not if Carl has anything to say about it. Jamie, get off of me. <laughs> really, dude? You know what I'm gonna say. Imagine how that would have gone if you could have jammed a butcher knife through the back of his skull. Now look what happened. Your sister just got bagged, along with your only hope of making it out of here alive. Nah, just kidding. Turns out she's totally fine. And she found the lighter. <laughs> I thought there'd be a lot more screaming. Guy's really committed to his role. Of course, there's one more problem with our plan I forgot to mention. The moment Big Bad touches off, this whole place is gonna go up like a Roman candle. Meaning, if we can't find an exit fast, we've basically just gone out of the frying pan and into the fire. Except, that won't actually be a problem, since it turns out those door shutters were barely attached at all. Seriously, it only takes three smacks from a coat rack to knock it right over. Assuming we couldn't just boop our way out of there without hardly trying, I would have made for one of the upstairs bedroom windows we already knocked out. It's less than ideal for sure, and smoke inhalation would become a problem almost immediately, so we'd pretty much have to go for it as soon as the fire started to keep from getting trapped. A conflagration like this is going to consume the entire house in just a couple minutes, so a bedsheet rope is probably out of the question at this point. Fortunately, while it may certainly cause serious injury, a fall from that height is definitely survivable, as long as we land properly, rolling from our feet to our side whatever we have to do to get out of there. There's only one final challenge left for us to pass, the white van of death. That said, unlike Olivia before us, we can actually hear emergency sirens approaching in the distance, so there's no reason for us to go waving down random vehicles, especially ones that look like that. We also don't have any way of knowing whether there were just the two attackers skulking around the area, so no matter what, our best bet would be to find some place to hunker down until the police and fire department show up. Sadly, after everything Carl and Jamie have endured, it's simple extraction anxiety that gets them in the end. Well that, and they still never mastered the double tap. Should've grabbed the second knitting needle. Instead of spray painting a couple X's on the asphalt and smoking them on the side of the road, it seems the puppet master has big plans for their particular set of skills. After all, he's gonna need someone to replace one of his goons. And what better way to keep her in line than by holding her little bro hostage? In the end, only Jamie and Carl made it out alive. Although, not quite in the way they were hoping for. That said, had we kept the family together and barricaded ourselves in a secure location long enough to assess the situation, we could have launched a more effective escape plan, or even summoned help from someone nearby. We also had a prime opportunity to take off and possibly even save Matt, had all three of us left the basement instead of just Olivia. For these reasons, I think the movie was beaten. Moral of the story, stay away from windowless vans. I, I shouldn't even have to say that.